50 years ago today, the 19th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution gave women the right to vote. On this anniversary, a militant minority of women's liberationists was on the streets across the country to demand equal employment for women, care centers for mothers, child abortions for anyone who wants them, and general equality between women and men. Well, uh, you couldn't get a credit card uh, in your own name unless you're, in, you're married, you got one in your husband's name. You, you couldn't buy a house, I was too young to buy a house, but you couldn't get a mortgage. If you wanted to get a job, you looked in the segregated want ads. As the nation was going into protest, so was the state of Illinois. In the big city of Chicago, a union was in the rise. That union was the Chicago Women's Liberation Union. Inspired by the Civil Rights Movement, the Chicago Women's Liberation Union, or CWLU, was a movement that sought to define women on their own terms and not those of men and society. They wanted to share fundamental rights. They wanted a voice of their own. Look, the point was never what we chose. The point is that we had the power to make a choice. Okay. So that is a phenomenon of the women's movement, that women can choose, have the power to choose. Uh, I mean, you know, if you're forced into a position, it's very different from choosing it. I mean, it's the whole nature of freedom. It has, I mean, that's, that's what it's all about. The Abortions Counseling Service, a woman's liberation, better known by its nickname, Jane, began as an underground referral group. They decided to perform the abortions themselves. Former Jane members estimated that they have performed more than 11,000 illegal abortions. Working under difficult conditions, Jane became legendary on the streets of Chicago for the quality of its care and the de dedication of its members. In 1992, the Supreme Court reaffirmed its position that abortion should be legal in the case of Planned Parenthood v. Casey. The case challenged a series of Pennsylvania regulations, ranging from a mandatory waiting period for abortions to a spousal consent provision, which limited a woman's access to abortion. Though the Supreme Court upheld most of the Pennsylvania laws, the court struck down spousal consent requirement as an undue burden on married women seeking abortions. Most states no longer try to ban abortions. Instead, legislatures tend to limit the time period during which a woman can have an abortion, as well as the procedures used to perform abortions. One common restriction is a limitation on a procedure known as the partial birth or late-term abortion. In 2003, Congress passed a Partial Birth Abortion Ban Act which prohibited the intact dilation and extraction abortion procedure. The procedure was typically used during the second trimester, sometimes after the point of viability. In the end, as the Jane Abortion Service was at its peak, it grabbed the government's attention, leading to the creation of legalized abortion. Not only did this illegal service bring bad events, but it opened to a world where a woman was able to choose. Finally, the Chicago Women's Liberation Union used everything in its power to legalize abortion, and that is exactly what they did. The tragedy of one group can lead to the triumph of another. I have worked in organizations where I've promoted the same kind of structure, where a group of people runs a significant part of an organization and they have responsibility and they have a lot of self-determination in how they run it. So I think it's a kind of feminist structure and so that uh, that has that was a really good um, lesson for me that it could actually work and it could grow.